Finding great candidates to hire can be like, well, trying to find a needle in a haystack. Sure, you can post your job to some job board, but then all you can do is hope the right person comes along. Which is why you should try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash post. ZipRecruiter doesn't depend on candidates finding you. It finds them for you. Its powerful technology identifies people with the right experience and actively invites them to apply to your job. You get qualified candidates fast. So while other companies might deliver a lot of hay, ZipRecruiter finds you what you're looking for. The needle in the haystack. See why four out of five employers who post a job on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. And right now, you can try ZipRecruiter for free. That's right, free at ZipRecruiter.com slash post. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash post. ZipRecruiter.com slash post. Hello and welcome to mini episode 251 of Real Life Ghost Stories and I have two spooky stories for you today and the last story comes from January the 3rd 2023 and story number one comes from Joe. My name is Joe and I'm the marketing assistant for Lakewood Theatre in Lake Oswego, Oregon. On January the 6th the theatre will be hosting the world premiere for an original play The Ghost of David Belasco, a comedy based on the famous New York playwright. New and original productions always struggle with finding an audience right out of the gate. And as we are coming off multiple sellout performances of Elf the Musical, I wanted to keep that momentum going into the next show as much as possible. I consulted with Natalie, the artistic and festival director for Lakewood, with different possibilities for generating interest in the show. And in the literal spirit of David Belasco, we came up with the idea of inviting a team of paranormal investigators to inspect the theatre for ghostly activity. The investigation was held on December the 19th, and although the team has not yet examined all of the footage they collected that night, what they have found, already, is eye-opening. The Lakewood Theatre was started in 1952 as a performance group that moved from venue to venue for its first several years before settling into a vacant Methodist church then finally moving into its current building in 1979, a former grade school built in 1929. Natalie and I agreed that after almost a century of constant activity, with countless number of people coming through the doors, there was a high probability that something supernatural may be cohabiting our space. I conducted a search for paranormal investigators in the area and immediately found the exact right people for the job, Sinister Coffee and Creamery, a local woman-owned coffee company who also conduct supernatural investigations. I'm a caffeine addict, and Natalie has boundless enthusiasm for the supernatural, so the combination was too perfect. After one call to Sinister co-owners Michelle and Kelly, they were 100% on board, and we immediately scheduled for them and their colleague James to take a preliminary tour of the site so they could get a read of the place. We gave the trio full access to the building, prop rooms, wardrobe, the boiler room, office space, the auditorium, the whole shebang. Natalie and I were very careful not to tell the three investigators anything beyond basic facts, as to not influence their feelings. We both have heard stories from other staff and a few performers about their own creepy experiences in the theatre. If the crew had similar experiences without any prior knowledge, then we knew we were onto something. During the tour, Kelly mentioned that normally their team would have to pick and choose what equipment to bring, but considering the size of the venue and the different locations where ghosts could be lurking, she said, we might have to bring everything. The date of December the 19th was chosen as we didn't have any shows going on that night. The crew would have the entire place to themselves until 8am the next day. Once the staff had gone home, Michelle, Kelly, James and a few other members of the Pacific Northwest Paranormal Collaborative set up their equipment around the building. Natalie joined in to document the event herself. I chickened out. Several cameras, recording devices and EMF meters were strategically placed all around the building 
and so the waiting game began. At first, the night was slow, a lot of listening through headphones while sitting still in the dark. Michelle remarked about this beforehand. The stuff you don't see on TV is all the downtime. Several hours into the night, the team got their first transmission from a spirit box located on the theatre stage. The message kept reading, Look up, look up, in an area just off stage left. This is an area where several staff and cast had mentioned seeing a white fuzzy shape above the curtain close to the ceiling. They listened for several more minutes. The voice continued to repeat, look up, look up, but there was no elaboration beyond that. Later, in another part of the building, the voices became more chatty. The team set up a power light device in order to better communicate with the voices. By their estimation, there may be eight or nine spirits floating around Lakewood. The names Paul and Stephanie were repeated multiple times. And then this happened. Were you performers here? Were you part of the play Ghost in the 60s? is right folks what and, and there's no nobody's on a walkie talkie or anything like that uh, no. wow two days later natalie did some research into lakewood's history she found a program from that production of ghosts and found a sponsor named paul but after some digging we found he had no connections to anyone named stephanie another possible roadblock was that Ghosts was performed at Lakewood's previous venue at the church down the street, several years before moving to our current location. However, replaying the video, the power light barely registered when the ghosts were asked if they were performers, but lit up when they were asked if they were part of the play. This could mean the spirits were members of the crew, former staff, sponsors or audience members of that show. Also, Lake Oswego is a close-knit community, with personal and professional ties that go back decades. There is a high probability that most of the people involved in Ghosts were still part of the Lakewood community well after the move from the church into the modified grade school. And let's be honest with ourselves. Theatre people love attention. If a theatre person were to haunt a venue, it would definitely be the place where they would be guaranteed an audience for eternity. This is one fact all of us at Lakewood can agree on. There is more footage from this investigation, but it has not been released yet. If you and your audience are interested, we will continue to send you updates as new evidence is uncovered. Since I was not there, I have to gather more detailed information from both Natalie and the PNWPC, so my correspondence is as accurate as possible. Natalie and I fully intend to cooperate with the PNWPC even after the ghost of David Belasco has closed. Judging by what has been uncovered so far, there is no telling what they will find next. I mean, Joe, you're not wrong. Theatre people love attention. And if I died and I knew that I was going to get permanent attention forever, you best believe I'd be haunting that theatre. 100%. And theatre people, like, in all seriousness, they often dedicate their lives to theatre. It is their passion, their love, their, their soul, their heart, everything. And it makes sense that you would then stick around after you were gone. The theatre is probably the place that brought you the most joy in life. So it would be difficult to leave it. I just want to say as well, I think it's really cool that that was what you decided to do in terms of your promo for this play, The Ghost of David Belasco. Like, I think that more venues need to be doing out of the box promo for stuff like this. And I think it's an amazing thing to do because suddenly you're tapping into a whole new audience who are not only interested, maybe interested in the play, but also interested in ghosts. And theatres are pretty creepy places. You know, when a theatre is empty and all the lights are out, it's a pretty creepy place. And we've always said before that theatres also carry a lot of energy from all those attention-seeking actors and theatre people that frequent theatres. And I would absolutely love if you kept us updated on what happens and what continues to come out of these investigations I really wish more venues were more open to having paranormal investigations like I can't tell you the amount of venues that I've contacted over the years to be like hey I'd like to come and you know record 
a podcast episode about the ghosts in your venue or I'd like to come and make a YouTube video about the ghosts in your venue and about the history and the stories that go with it and people are so reluctant. I think that sometimes people think that ghost stories aren't going to be taken seriously even though ghost stories are really important and we love them. Today's episode is sponsored by ZocDoc. So you're trying to find a cause for your symptoms. For me, it was excessive hair loss and you end up stumbling down a TikTok rabbit hole full of questionable advice from so-called experts. But there are better ways to get the answers that you want and the care you deserve from trusted professionals and not random people on the internet. ZocDoc helps you to find expert doctors and medical professionals that specialise in the care you need and deliver the type of experience you want. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them and treat almost every condition under the sun. No more doctor roulette or scouring the internet for questionable reviews. With ZocDoc you have a trusted guide to connect you to your favourite doctor you haven't met yet. Millions of people use ZocDoc's free app to find and book a doctor in their neighbourhood who is patient-reviewed and fits their needs and schedule just right. Go to ZocDoc.com slash ghost and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash ghost. ZocDoc.com slash ghost. Finding great candidates to hire can be like, well, trying to find a needle in a haystack. Sure, you can post your job to some job board, but then all you can do is hope the right person comes along, which is why you should try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash post. ZipRecruiter doesn't depend on candidates finding you. It finds them for you. Its powerful technology identifies people with the right experience and actively invites them to apply to your job. You get qualified candidates fast. So while other companies might deliver a lot of hay, ZipRecruiter finds you what you're looking for. The needle in the haystack. See why four out of five employers who post a job on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. And right now, you can try ZipRecruiter for free. That's right, free at ZipRecruiter.com slash post. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash post. ZipRecruiter.com slash post. And story number two comes from Jeannie. I have had many paranormal experiences, most of them occurring during my teenage years. I don't believe that anything I experienced had to do with going through puberty. I grew up in an abusive household and my parents fought frequently. I believe that the negativity is what attracted the spirits to us. Today I am not writing to you about the experiences of my teenage years. I'll save those for a later date. I have felt compelled to share a different story with you since listening to the mini episode Stoked by a Smell. I feel I have a similar story that I never felt confident sharing until I heard that episode. I only hope that if others have had a similar experience, they may feel some comfort in knowing they are not alone. When I was 30 years old, my husband and I were expecting our third child, our second daughter. I always knew the gender of my children before they were born. It would be revealed to me in my dreams. I even correctly dreamt that my aunt was going to have a baby girl, but I digress. During my 20-week ultrasound, we received the news that our baby had spina bifida, a birth defect where the spinal column doesn't develop properly, meaning our child would have a physical disability and would have some paralysis in her legs. The news was devastating for us, but we moved forward trying to figure out what the impact of this diagnosis was going to be. My grandfather passed away unexpectedly a month later and never got to meet his great-granddaughter. Our daughter, Cassie, was born in June of 2007 and had a surgery on her back, the first of many surgeries, the day after she was born. It's stressful enough having an infant, but having a medically fragile infant makes it an even more stressful time. I would often fall asleep on my daughter's bedroom floor since I felt I needed to be close to her to keep her safe. When Cassie was about eight months old, she got sick. Your typical cold but being that she was medically fragile and so young, it was more worrisome. 
I set up a humidifier in her room to help her be comfortable and fell asleep on her floor. I woke up sometime during the night, sore from sleeping on the floor, and immediately needed to check on my daughter, as parents do when their child is sick. The room was a bit foggy from the steam of the humidifier, but hovering over my daughter in her crib was a thick cloud. I didn't like the look of the cloud, and it was so thick I couldn't see my daughter through it. Thinking that it was somehow caused by the humidifier, I tried to fan the cloud away from my daughter so I could see her, but the cloud didn't move. I swished my arm through, but nothing. I noticed that the cloud didn't swirl the way you would expect, like the swirling you would see if you ran your arm through smoke. This cloud just didn't move, it just hovered over my daughter, preventing me from seeing her. My heart was racing. I reached through the cloud into the crib and picked up my daughter, risking waking her because I needed to get her away from the cloud and needed to see that she was okay. She was fine and slept through me picking her up. Shortly after removing my daughter from her crib, the cloud disappeared and the air cleared. I sat in the rocking chair holding my sleeping baby till I felt comfortable to set her back in her crib and I laid back on the floor watching my daughter while she slept. I tried to convince myself that the cloud was my grandfather watching over my daughter since she was sick and nothing malicious. I didn't tell anyone about this event since I wasn't really sure what to make of it myself. I've experienced ghosts and heard lots of stories about shadow people, demons, aliens, Bigfoot, etc. But I've never heard of a paranormal cloud. I never saw the cloud again. Our house is a modified two-story home. So when you walk in the front door, there is a kitchen and dining room on that level and nothing else. To get to bedrooms or bathrooms, you need to go up or down a flight of stairs. This became an issue as Cassie got older since she uses a wheelchair. When Cassie was 11 years old, we built an addition onto the main level, adding a family room, bedroom and bathroom so she could access everything she needed on one level. I didn't and still don't like that her bedroom is so far away from mine or anyone else in the house but it is the only way to make our home accessible for her. Cassie was very excited about her new room and wasn't bothered by her bedroom being so far away from the others. I always kept my phone by me at night so she could call me if she needed anything. A few months after moving into her room, she started calling me about an hour after I put her to bed to tell me that she couldn't breathe. I rushed to her bedside to find her sitting up in bed crying and hyperventilating saying she couldn't breathe. She was clearly breathing but was saying she felt like she wasn't getting enough air in. Not knowing what else to do, I took her to the hospital emergency room only half a mile from our home. The doctor couldn't find anything wrong with her but thought maybe she had an asthma attack even though she had no history of asthma. The doctor gave us an inhaler, taught her how to use it and referred her to a pulmonologist. The pulmonologist was booked weeks out so all we could do in the meantime was use the inhaler if she had another incident and go back to hospital if things got bad. We had several more times in the following weeks prior to the appointment that she would call me shortly after going to bed and tell me she couldn't breathe. We would use the inhaler and I would sit with her until she was able to fall asleep. We finally got to the pulmonologist. He ran several tests and found absolutely nothing wrong with her breathing, oxygen levels or lung capacity and told us to throw away the inhaler because she didn't need it. I started to wonder if she was having panic attacks at night that were causing her to feel like she couldn't breathe, so I found a counsellor for her and it seemed to help. Cassie is now 15 years old. One day my older daughter and myself had watched an episode of Ghost Hunters and started talking about ghosts. I decided to share some of my encounters I had with ghosts when I was a teenager and I told her the story about the cloud that hung over Cassie's crib and that I like to think it was my grandfather. Cassie came out of her room and wanted to know what we were talking about. We told her that we were talking about ghosts. And that's when Cassie told us that she would wake up in the middle of the night and see smoke in her room, and sometimes she could even smell smoke. She said that she has gotten up because she was scared that there was a fire in the house, but realised that there wasn't smoke outside of her room. It was only in her room. Cassie never woke me up or told me about the smoke because it goes away so quickly after she wakes up. She has a hard time falling back to sleep afterwards. That's when I told her the story of the cloud I saw when she was a baby. I would still like to think that it's my grandfather, but the fact that Cassie sometimes smells smoke in her room leads me to believe that it isn't him. I did not tell Cassie this because I don't want to scare her. 
I told her the next time it happens, she should grab her phone and take a picture. Cassie liked the idea of trying to get a photo of the smoke in her room, but has not seen the smoke since I suggested taking a picture of it. As cool as it would be to have a photo, I'm happy that she isn't being bothered by whatever it was. But now that I know Cassie has been visited in her new room by what she calls smoke, I can't help but wonder if it's the same thing I saw hovering over her when she was an infant, and if that was what caused her breathing issues that she started having shortly after moving into that room. I hope whatever it was will not return. If there is anyone else with a similar experience, I hope this story brings them comfort. I think, Jeannie, that a lot of people listening to this episode and a lot of people who have listened to the podcast for a long time will agree with you that negativity is what attracts spirits to people because often these stories start with a divorce or a difficult household or a traumatic incident and I do wonder if negativity does something to attract these things to us. I don't know. It's really interesting that this only started when your daughter was sick and I don't want to um, try and lessen your own feelings about it or delegitimize your feelings because I know you said it, you, that you didn't like the cloud immediately when it when you first saw it but I wonder if if it is some sort of guardian angel it might not necessarily be your grandfather but if it is something or someone that is looking out for Cassie because it's interesting that it only first appeared when she was sick and then interesting when she was seeing it and she was also suffering with these breathing issues panic attacks whatever they were and while I agree it would be very cool to have a photo I also agree that I kind of I hope that she doesn't experience it again and that it just calms down now and doesn't happen again that'd be great also I would like to say that this is my massive shout out my big up to any parents out there who are listening to this podcast I am permanently in awe of parents because parenting seems to be a incredibly difficult and b it's a lot of a lot of love but also a lot of worry a lot of anxiety and a lot of sacrifice for your children and I have the utmost respect for any parents out there that are listening. Thank you so much to Joe and Jeannie for sending in your stories. Remember the last story came from January the 3rd 2023. If you would like to send in your story you can do so by emailing it to reallifeghoststoriespodcast at gmail.com. You can also check out the website reallifeghoststoriespodcast.com and if you are desperate for some extra content you can subscribe to our Patreon. That is patreon.com forward slash stories, where for $5 a month or $2 a month you get access to heaps of extra content as well as every single main and mini episode completely ad free. And on that note I shall see you next time. Finding great candidates to hire can be like, well, trying to find a needle in a haystack. Sure, you can post your job to some job board, but then all you can do is hope the right person comes along. Which is why you should try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash post. ZipRecruiter doesn't depend on candidates finding you. It finds them for you. Its powerful technology identifies people with the right experience and actively invites them to apply to your job. You get qualified candidates fast. So while other companies might deliver a lot of hay, ZipRecruiter finds you what you're looking for. The needle in the haystack. See why four out of five employers who post a job on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. And right now, you can try ZipRecruiter for free. That's right, free at ZipRecruiter.com slash post. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash post. ZipRecruiter.com slash post. At Kroger, we know the minute a tomato is picked, the fresh timer starts. The sooner we get our produce to you, the fresher it is. That's why we've shortened the time from harvest to home for our tasty tomatoes, strawberries, and salads. So no matter how you shop, you have more time with your fresh produce. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Save big on your favorites with the buy five or more, save a dollar each sale. Simply buy five or more participating items and save a dollar each with your card. Kroger, fresh for everyone.